Today on Dirty Jobs, I've come to the middle of Florida to attempt the impossible, the completion of this bridge in just one day. They tell me it can be done. Strap in, folks. This one's going to be a doozy. All across America, bridges just like this one are under construction. We're outside of Tampa. This is going to be the Pinellas Bridge as we introduce to you uh, the world of rod busting and the men who uh, bust their rods. I thought I'd experienced every construction job under the sun. Then I met these guys. This is Jack and this is Jennifer. You're the Nixes. Yes. Uh, you run this operation and it's officially called what? Shelby Rectors. How long have you had it? Started in 1997. I'm gonna get oriented. We're gonna get to know these guys a little better. And then Rods will be busted. Oh yeah, Rods yes. will be busted. Here's Mike. Jack Thomas. Pleasure, Jack. That's superintendent for the project. Oh geez, I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you, Jack. That's quite all right. A lot so of I'm questions. For. All right, good. That's Jack. These slender rods are called rebar, which is short for reinforcing steel bar. Rod busters are iron workers who build infrastructure with rebar. Their work is both artistic and critical, but the results of their labor are always covered with concrete, out of sight, and therefore out of mind. Time to correct that. So this part of the deck is already tied. This is actually ready for concrete. So it's easier to walk where it's been tied and the spacings are closer together. If you come out to here, You'll see the spacings are further apart. Right. It's an art. You kind of get used to it. Well, how many times do your feet slip between the holes there, thereby <laughs> removing the skin from your ankle? <laughs> uh, it has happened. A lot of math goes into properly spacing rebar, and it varies from job to job. This bridge's blueprints call for nine-inch squares. <laughs> Let's go do some real work. My boss for today is veteran iron worker Jack Thomas, who is very serious about heavy metal. What's that way? One of those. Uh, it's like 3.25 pounds a foot. Don't quote me on that. And it's 60 feet. 60 foot. Six, that's 180 pounds a bar. Roughly. That's four bars. Was that four bars they're carrying? Yeah. We usually carry one per man and then one for the company. Beyond the math and the artistry, rod busting demands a measure of brute strength. Upper body strength is mandatory. So is lower body strength. Hold it with your other hand. And then we'll grab one at a time. Right? Good. Oh, man, how do you know which one he's grabbing? Because uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Pull it up high enough so you know which one to grab. It's 90 degrees at 10 AM. The humidity, 80%. One more. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. All right, about uh, 20 more trips of that. <laughs> and so it goes, one trip after another, under an unforgiving sun and a punishing load of steel. The pace is relentless. Consequences of putting my foot in the wrong place at the wrong time are impossible not to think about. By the time this project is done, this crew will have installed over 21 million pounds of rebar. Which one is that? This guy. Yep. There's a giant spaghetti joke in here somewhere. Write in if you got one. Don't gotta be perfect, Mike. We'll fix it later. <laughs> All right. We'll fix it later. There we go. How old are you? Uh -oh. 53. I'll be 53 in September. Craig, how old are you? I'm 43. I'll be 44 this year. How long have you been doing this? 21 years. <laughs> Rod busters work in the sun. Ready? And they work in the cold. All right. But no matter the temperature, one man's slip up could be another's horrible injury. It's not just about brute strength. It's also about balance and coordination. Ah, uh, sorry. And doing what you're told. My bad. And using muscles you didn't even know you had. Woo! Almost to the end. Uh-oh! Sitting down on the job? I'm sitting down, Craig. All right, take him off the clock. You exhausted? Go take a break in the shade. No, Let I'm us good. know when I'm you're good. ready. Let us know when you get ready. No, I'm good. I'm just Start getting paid again. I'm just enjoying <laughs> the view. <laughs> Taking in some fresh air. I hear that. Busting rods has me sucking wind, and it's not even lunchtime. Now you get to take a break. And by break, we mean bent over and tying it. <laughs> Brooks is giving me a crash course on tying rebar. It's critical that every rod be secured with steel wire, so nothing moves when the concrete is poured over it. Hey, Mike, I'm going to do you a favor. Yeah. You can put those pliers away. This is new technology. 
Don't even tell me that's gonna put the wire on there. How's that for you? Well, that's a bunch of bull <laughs> What is that? Put it on the intersection. Rebar tying gun. So that's what we use with our new guys. Everybody's having fun with the guy from TV today. But why doesn't everybody up here have one? <laughs> we use them sparingly because ultimately you have to learn how to tie. Put it right here? Yep, and pull the trigger one time. DOT spec says we got to tie every third intersection. Jack Nix is 54 years old. Keep going. He is a very successful business owner who skipped college to learn a skill that's in demand. You know, school's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm an example of that, you know, high school education, run a company that did 17 million last year, <laughs> so. I'm sorry, yeah. that's worth repeating. <laughs> Shelby Erector did 17 million last year. Yeah, in labor. And you and Jen built it? Yes. With a couple of uh, high school degrees and a little bit of continuing education? Well, if you're gonna work in the trades and work with your hands and you're mechanical and school's not for you, there's a career here to have. You I mean, pay your dues like anything else. That's right. We do all this work, and then it gets covered by concrete. And nobody sees it, Matt. <laughs> that's right. None of that steel is visible, but it's impossible to overstate its importance to our national infrastructure. Uh-oh, watch the bundle, watch the bundle, get low. So too are speed and precision. And we like to rest it on our knee like this. It, it helps. Good. Ready? That's very helpful. Uh-oh, wrong, wrong one. one. Sorry. Remember, you got to feel. Feel the one coming up. Yeah. There you go. This one just goes down. Oh, yeah. On average, rod busters carry 4,000 pounds of rebar every day. That's 20,000 pounds per man per week. That's funny how it gets heavier here in the middle, Jack. <laughs> I told you. The taller you are, the heavier it is. That, my friends, is some very heavy arithmetic. Once the deck is laid out, the rod busters step aside so the concrete crew can waltz in and bury their work forever. But for Jack and his rod busters, the work never stops. And I mean, never. How are you? Your tools, my friend. Oh. Just what you wanted to see. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see. Sergio's the foreman on this site, in spite of his completely unimpressive physique. We're going to have to get you to the gym later on, man. Yeah, just so you know, I just missed some workouts lately. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. Inverted T's are critical supports that hold bridges and roads in place. Each upside down T contains a gargantuan amount of steel. That's a precise measure. When all the rods are in place, they'll be covered in concrete, and that finished inverted T will support the next deck. Then, you do it again. We're pausing very briefly here because it seems obvious that Sergio needs a microphone on him. Jones, we're also going to need to put a mic on this bicep over here and maybe on the pectoral, uh, just because we want to make sure we get the sound of all the sweat running down Sergio's chiseled body. <laughs> you absolute freak, man. How long have you been on this gig? Uh, 24 years. 24 years? Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying, there's a lot of manly going on here.